Hello and welcome to the Plant Paradigm Podcast, where we have inspiring conversations with individuals from all around the world and look for ways to create a clean, green and sustainable future for us, the planet and all beings. I'm your host, Tom Simak, a fellow plant eater who strives to optimize every living ecosystem, passionate about looking after this beautiful floating rock we call home and all the lovely creatures that dwell among it. I wanted to make an episode about something that's happened quite a little bit in the past year or so, and that's people transitioning outside of the plant-based lifestyle back introducing animal products, most commonly fish and eggs. I wanna focus in on a celebrity who's gotten brain fog recently, and that's Miley Cyrus, who's now pescatarian. Now, this isn't a news channel by any means, but I wanted to lift the fog in regards to Omegas, pun intended. So to start us off, let's look at Miley's situation. And actually to preface that, I'm in no way, shape or form judging her or her decisions. I think everyone has baggage that they have and battles that they're, you know, fighting inside and it can't always be easy, especially with millions of people watching in Miley's case. So let's get into it. Miley was plant-based for six years and that's a fair bit of time. She originally went vegan because of her pet fish who she thought was intelligent. But through the years, she has had her own struggles with parties, drug abuse and having a brain injury as a child. Now, the reason I'm mentioning those things is because brain fog could be due to a myriad and a whole host of different things, not just diet. And whilst diet does play a large part, it is absolutely not the be all and end all. This whole announcement was made on the Joe Rogan experience, which I'm really not surprised about since he does pick his guests to somehow always mention the negatives of veganism. And I'm not sure if that's just his pure stance or the fact that he has meat industry sponsors. But she's had to introduce fish and omegas into her life because her brain wasn't functioning properly. In quotes, of course. And she later talked about how the vegan diet isn't for anyone and it wasn't her brain type food, which I'm not sure exactly what that means. So the first thing we'll dig into is omegas. We have omegas three, six, and nine. They are unsaturated fats and in balance, they are vital for our health. Omega-3 and 6 are polyunsaturated fats and are essential, meaning the body cannot produce these. Omega-9s are monounsaturated, non-essential, meaning that once the omega-3 and 6s are in the body in a healthy amount, we actually produce the omega-9s internally. Now let's dive into omega-3s, which is arguably the most popular or talked about ones. So there are three types of omega-3s, which is ALA, EPA, and DHA. ALA is turned into EPA and DHA within the body. Great sources of omega-3 include grains, flaxseed, chia seed, and some green leafy vegetables. Omega-6s are mostly found in vegetable oils, and in the body, they are located everywhere. But too much of these can actually be harmful to some cells' activity. Now, I'll be the first to say that omega-3s are lower in vegans and vegetarians, anywhere between 30 and 50% in fact. Now, this could be because of a whole range of different reasons, and one of them being that a lot of vegans and vegetarians don't eat animals because of the ethical reasons. So they're not in it for the health, in other words, and a healthy vegan generally does focus on getting in all the necessary nutrients. Now, to make up our recommended amount of omega-3s in our body, we need to be consuming ALA as part of 0.5% of all our total daily caloric intake, which is quite a small amount. To put that in perspective, that's a teaspoon of chia or flaxseed added to your morning smoothie or oats. On top of that, the World Health Organization still recommends that you supplement 250 milligrams of EPA and DHA daily. Now, I'm not stupid and I'm not gonna not admit fish do have EPA and DHA in them, but our oceans are also full of toxins and crap that these fish contain. 
This can be persistent organic pollutants or POP or even polychlorinated biphenyls or PCB. And of course, there's plenty of heavy metals that are found in fish such as mercury, which we know isn't good for us. In fact, it can actually increase stroke likelihood by up to 67%. Now, we won't be touching too much on the ethical side of things, but we know overfishing happens and the absolute junk that is left behind by these fishermen, such as nets and fish hooks, and not to mention the bykill that kills dolphins and turtles and sharks needlessly just from the crap that they leave in the oceans. And especially looking at the big industry size fishing boats. Now, that being said, you could also get your 250 milligrams of EPA and DHA from algae oil, which is free from any contaminants and actually doesn't have any harmful chemicals. So that's a pretty convenient alternative. And it's also worth noting that fish don't produce EPA and DHA. They, in fact, get it from algae. So why not go straight to the source? We also know that DHA is especially vital for our health. So maybe Miley has some merit looking into the omegas. The problem with this is that we can't look into her diet, which is where a lot of issues can face. Like I said, she was an ethical vegan, meaning that she might not have been going in and having the healthiest whole foods plant-based diet. So I don't know if she was eating burger and chips and pizza, which are all they can all be made vegan, but they're not going to give you the nutrients that you need. Was she eating her 30 to 40 plants a week? Did she try adding chia seeds or flax seeds to her diet or other seed and grain alternatives? I don't know. And that goes to then question, did she actually consult a doctor or a nutritionist and maybe get some tests done before she actually tried to introduce fish? And of course, we can't know the answers to these questions, but it's worth pondering that this fish thing might not have been the real issue at hand. And of course, all the studies that I think have merit in this podcast that I do mention, I will leave in the show notes and the bio so you can check them out. And speaking of literature, there was a recent study with 960 elderly people that actually linked the consumption of green vegetables to an increase in brain cognition. So to avoid brain fog, I guess it's look to algae and seeds and also green vegetables. Let's get into philosophy and mindset, kind of where I thrive a little bit and I have a lot more questions. What can happen to a majority of vegans, which I've come to terms to is the absolute burdening of the pressure that they give themselves for being this idealistic version of what a vegan should be. What that means is, especially for someone in Miley's position where she has millions of eyes and fans looking at her, watching what she does, and potentially copying that, you have this overwhelming sense of pressure both internally and externally, to do the right thing. So I wonder if her feeling really good after eating fish might have just been the weight lifted off her shoulder of being like, "Ah, I'm no longer vegan, so I don't have to be this perfect, idealistic person that loves animals all the time. I want to drive home that it's okay to have weaknesses. If you eat plant-based for years, and then go to consume a cow or a fish or a chicken and see how that feels to to contribute to that and then go back to the plant-based diet, I will have no judgment for you. Yes, I might feel quite sad for the animal that this animal had to lose their life, but you then going against the grain and understanding that less than 5% of the population is actually vegan and then going for the rest of your life, like over four or five years, you save thousands of animals. I think that I would prefer people to eat one animal a year than a hundred and not have the pressure for this to happen and then affect potentially lots of people to then look at veganism and see an escape, which it's not about seeing an escape. It's not a prison. It's a lifestyle But the prison is the mindset and this ideology that very importantly is created from within. 
you can find that pressure within anything, acting, cooking, being a certain chef, being a certain policeman, dad, whatever it is, this can be found. So I think more than anything, this could potentially be a mindset issue and a paradigm issue where she's just relieved herself of the pressure that she's been feeling for years. So I really beg the question, was this a diet culprit or was this a mental culprit? Which makes it even more fascinating because she has 22 animals in her farmhouse and 22 at her home, which I don't want to take that away from her. That is amazing. I'm so glad she's in a position to look after 44 animals and hopefully give them amazing life. But I don't know if that then can balance out the animals that she'll be killing for food, potentially unnecessarily, especially since we know we can get all these sources from plants. While she's doing amazing things, you know, still being pescatarian and not going full carnivore diet or becoming a hunter just, you know, yet, because I know a lot of ex-vegans do that as I guess, a, well, I don't really know. I guess it comes back to the pressure thing. So I know that eating these first few fish for her might have been difficult, but I also want to say that if she does come back to the vegan community and she does want to continue living a plant-based lifestyle, I will always be welcoming for her and people like that, just as we're welcoming to new vegans. That's completely fine. But I think, you know, as a community, we shouldn't be, you know, pushing her and sending her hate. Although she said in the interview that she was expecting vegans to come after her, I don't think that's going to be the most productive thing. I think that being there and understanding where she's coming from and potentially just saying that maybe those other solutions might actually get her to look into that. And the sooner she does, the sooner she could maybe get back to being a plant-based dieter. Now, coming to the tail end of the episode, I want to reiterate one more time that I'm in no way, shape, or form judging Miley or any of these ex-vegans and what they've done. However, I do implore them to all look into the options that they have. And if they have, I wonder what went wrong. You can absolutely share all this stuff on social media and reach out to plant-based doctors and, and nutritionists that are all over the recent science. That would be a great option and how you can continue on this vegan lifestyle without harming animals, but also having complete brain concentration. So what do you think of this whole situation? Do you think it's fair that she's copying all this flack now? Let us know on Instagram at plant.com paradigm we're also on twitter tiktok youtube all the good stuff if you are watching this on youtube by the way hi how are you going please like comment subscribe all the good stuff and if you are listening give this a share and review and all the other good stuff if you like this style that's very different to the usual stuff i know interviews and all that that's all coming but if you do like this style, let us know on Instagram. I do enjoy diving into the science and doing these response, I guess, episodes just to clear up the air a little bit. But until next time, stay happy, eat plants. Peace.